Good morning. <clears throat> Today is, my eyes would focus. I can't see anything. Okay, Monday the 18th. And <clears throat> before we get started on our daily reflection, um, our little challenge, we have six weeks until it's over. And so for those six weeks, I apologize to those of you who watch every day. This may get repetitive, but I want to remind or maybe tell those who don't watch every day that the Book of Mormon challenge is coming up, that I am making the journals. I'm only making 12. Um, three people gave me their names yesterday um, that they wanted a journal. Um, so if you want one, I'm only making 12. Get me your name soon. Um, and then I'm shipping out at the end of October. We're, we're going to finish the challenge, the New Testament challenge for November and December, but I'm shipping out end of October. So if you would like a journal, please get me your name. Um, you can comment below or email it to me. Commenting below is perfectly fine. Um, and that's all. All right, let's get started. Um, I got the set schedule all set. And uh, I, it's going to be great. It's going to be good. Um, it's just the way that the Book of Mormon works out. But... near the end in December, we're going to have some free days. So that'll be nice. All right. Um, I said it's the 18th. Yes, it is. Okay. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were holding that they should not know him. Luke chapter 24, verse 15 and 16. We live in this world almost unaware that just beyond the veil are those who love us and minister in our behalf. When he was sustained as 11th president of the church, President Harold B. Lee said, There has been here an overwhelming spiritual endowment, attesting no doubt that in all likelihood we are in the presence of personages, seen and unseen, who are in attendance, who know... Who knows but that even our Lord and Master would be near us on such an occasion as this, for we and the world must never forget that this is his church, and under his almighty direction we are to serve. The Lord said, Behold, verily, verily, I say unto you that mine eyes are upon you. I am in your midst, and ye cannot, and ye cannot see me. Um... I have thoughts uh, on that, but I don't know. I'm going to move on. Okay, so today is 2 Corinthians chapter 8. And this, I believe he's talking about um, charity, but like, um, but more like uh, helping the needy. Um that's what I'm getting from the chapter anyway. Uh, True saints impart of their substance to the poor. Christ out of his poverty brought eternal riches. So that is what I got from the chapter. Sorry. My... All right. So the verse I chose for my personal statement is 14. Uh, but by... An equality that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, that their abundance also may be a supply for your want, that there may be equality. Um, my personal statement is, I am blessed. I must share that blessing with those who lack. Um, I've said this before. I think I said it a couple of weeks ago. I've never, never been financially in a place where I am today. Never. I've always got by, by the skin of my teeth. And, um, like 
the most I've ever had in savings was a thousand dollars and that was just to pay the bills to get through the month where I didn't have any money you know what I, like a destitute you know just but I've never been blessed the way I've been blessed right now in my life and I need to not only take that blessing and save it for a rainy day when I am not so blessed, but I also need to share it with those who who may be in the spot I was a few years ago. You know, if somebody's destitute or down on their luck or getting by on the skin of their teeth, then I need to share my abundance, share my blessing. Would I have accepted charity from somebody else during that time? No, absolutely not. I am prideful. Okay. You know, we haven't looked at Jeffrey in a while. Eleven. Okay. The next one is Second Corinthians 11. Oh, and then we're done. Okay. So that's good to know. Jeffrey will be coming up soon. Um, let's go to the verse by verse. I'm a little scattered this morning. I don't know what's going on. Okay. We've got one thing here. For verse 14. We should impart of our substance to the less fortunate, but by an equality that is according to proper needs and wants. The Lord's kind of equality does not refer to sameness of quality, but rather to equal opportunity to satisfy all needs and wants. Um, it, it reminds me of, uh, what is it? The law of consecration and, and when the early saints lived it, it wasn't that... This family got a bag of flour and, uh, you know, two cows and blah, blah, blah. And then this family got a bag of flour and two cows. It's not everybody gets the same thing. It's everybody gets according to their needs. So if a family has eight kids, they're going to get a little bit more than a family that only has two kids. Um, and that's important that not everybody needs to be the same. That's not the point of this world that everybody be the same it's that everybody be equal and the same is not equal okay i will leave you now with a prayer from diary of prayer it is the 18th this one is from bishop cotton of calcutta oh god who has made of who has made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth and it send thy blessed Son, Jesus Christ, to preach peace to them that are afar off, and to them that are nigh, grant that all the peoples of the world may feel after thee, and find thee, and hasten, O God, the fulfillment of thy promise to pour out thy Spirit upon all flesh through Jesus Christ our Lord. All right. That was 2 Corinthians chapter 8, and tomorrow we do chapter 9. We will see you then. Bye.